Hi, today we're going to be learning about finding roots using prime factorization. We're going to start off by looking at how roots and exponents are related to each other. Okay, so we're going to do an example first. We're going to look at the cube root of 7 to the power of 6. Okay, so first of all, with a cube root of 7 to the power of 6, what 7 to the power of 6 means is 7 multiplied by itself 6 times. So we've got the cube root of 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. So that's what that actually means. Okay, now when we are finding a root, remember in this case is the cube root, we want to find what can be multiplied together 3 times to get whatever is inside here. That is what we're trying to find when we're finding the cube root. If we're trying to find the square root, we want to know what can be multiplied together twice to get whatever is inside. This number over here is the index of our radical, which is the root sign, okay? And this number tells us how many things need to be multiplied together, how many identical things need to be multiplied together to give, it, uh, to give us whatever is inside here. So at the moment, I've got 7 to the power of 6 inside here. So I want three identical things that I can multiply together to give me 7 to the power of 6. So I'm going to see if I can split this up into three identical groups. So I've got over here 2, 2, and 2 sevens. So each of these groups, there's three groups now. I wanted three because I'm finding the cube root of 7 to the power of 6. Each of those groups is identical to each other. And in each of them, I've got 7 times 7. So this could have been written as the cube root of 7 squared times 7 squared times 7 squared, because remember 7 times 7 is 7 squared. 7 times 7 is 7 squared, and 7 times 7 is 7 squared. So now, now that I know three identical things that can be multiplied together to give me what's inside here, I can now find the cube root by taking one of those things. So the cube root is equal to one of those things that I can multiply together three times. So the cube root of 7 to the power of 6 is 7 squared. Okay, so now I'm going to work that out and that gives me 49. Okay, so let's have a look at what actually happened over here. When I was finding the cube root, this number 3 over here is, like I said, it's the, the index of my radical, which is the root sign. The number inside here is what we call the radicand. So this is my index of the radical. This sign over here is the radical or the root sign. And this over here is my radicand. Okay, so the index of my radical tells me how many identical things need to be multiplied together to give me my radicand. And that is what I want to find out. I want to find out what is one of those things that can be multiplied together. So I take my radicand and I split it up into, in this case, three identical groups, the factors into three identical groups. And then I see what is one of those groups and that is going to be my cube root. Okay, so now I could have gone straight from here to there by doing this. When I I'm looking at this over here. You can see that when I had the 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7, I split it up into three identical groups. And by doing that, what it actually caused, um, what it caused was that this 6, my exponent over here, the 6, ended up being split up into 3 as well. Okay, it was divided into 3. So what I could have done is instead of going through this whole process, I could have gone straight from here to there by saying six divided or yeah six divided by three because I know that I need to have three identical groups and when I split this up into three identical groups what happens is two of them are going to go here two of them are going to go there and two of them are going to go there so it splits that 6 up into 3 as well. So I'm going to have 6 divided by 3. So I could have gone straight from there to here by taking this exponent and dividing it by 3. 
Okay, so this is where we can now get to a rule that we can use. And our rule is that if our radicand, this number over here, has an exponent, we can divide the exponent by the radicals index. Okay, so over here, my radicand was 7 to the power of 6. It has an exponent of 6. And I can divide that 6 by the, the radicals exponent. That's the 3 outside here, the little 3 that I see there, which tells me it's a cube root. Okay? So I can take this exponent and divide it by the 3, and that will help me to find out what the root is. So in this case, I'm finding the cube root, so what the cube root is of 7 to the power of 6. Okay, so this is a rule that we can use. Now, I just need to remind you about what happens if you have an example like the square root of 5 to the power of 20 or something like that okay so now in this case when you have a square root you can't see a little number over here you can't see the index okay now if you can't see the index that means it's a square root and it means that that little index is invisible and it's a 2 so you treat it as though it's a 2 and you're going to divide the exponent by 2 if that happens over there so in this case over here I would say that I've got 5 and then I take the 20, the exponent inside of my radicand, and I divide it by the radical's index, which is 2. So 20 divided by 2, that gives me 10. So that is 5 to the power of 10. And when you're working with big numbers like this, you can leave it in exponential form. You don't need to actually work that out. Um, you can if you want to. 5 to the power of 10. And that gives us that very big number over there. But when we are working with very, very big numbers like that, you don't have to write it out. Um, in standard form. You can write it in exponential form like this. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few to that you're going to work on for yourself, that you're going to use this rule to calculate or work out what the roots are. So I'm going to give you three minutes to work, on, no, I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these examples.
Okay, you should be done with those by now. So let's go through those examples. So for question A, we had the square root of 5 to the power of 10. So first of all, as I said already, if you can't see an index, it means that there's an invisible little 2 over there. So we're going to divide our exponent inside here by 2. And that gives me 5 to the power of 5. Now, if you worked out 5 to the power of 5, you should have found that that was 3,125. Okay, the next one, we had the cube root of 3 to the power of 12. So if you divide the 12 by 3, that gives you 3 to the power of 4. And when you work out 3 to the power of 4, that is 81. Okay, this one over here, you could have left as 5 to the power of 5, but this one you do need to work out 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Okay, then 7 to the power of, or the fifth root of 7 to the power of 15 is 7 to the power of 15 divided by 5 is 3. So 7 to the power of 3 is 343. That is one of the ones that you should already know as well. So over here, we took our exponent each time and we divided it by our um, the index of our radical. Okay, so now we're going to use this to help us to work out exponent or roots rather of big numbers. So like in this example, we have got the square root of 5,184. 5, but now obviously this number is not written in exponential form. So what we're going to do is we are first going to take this number and we're going to write it so that it is in exponential form using a method that we have already learned previously. And that is the ladder method. In order to write it as a product of its prime factors, we're going to use the ladder method. Okay, and then when we write it as product of its prime factors, we can then write it in exponential form. So first, I'm going to take 5,184, and I'm going to make a ladder. And I'm going to say, well, first of all, it's even, so 2 is going to go in there, and that gives me 2,592. It's still even, so I can still use 2, that gives me 1,296. 2 goes in there again, that gives me 648. 2 goes in again, that's 324. 2 goes in again, that is 162. Then 2 goes in again, and that gives me 81. Then 2 doesn't go in anymore because it's not even anymore. So now 3 goes in, and that gives me 27. Then 3 goes again, that's 9. 3 goes in again, that gives me 3. And finally 3 goes in one more time, and that gives me 1. Okay, so I can take this whole number, 5,184, and I can write it as a product of its prime factors. Now, what we've done in the past, we've written things as pro numbers as products of the prime factors. We've written 2 times 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 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. But we don't need to do that because now we know about exponential form. We know that 2 to the power of 3 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2. Or in this case, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 2s that I'm multiplying together. So I can write that as 2 to the power of 6. I don't need to write 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 6 times. I can just write 2 to the power of 6. So I'm going to say 5,184 is 2 to the power of 6 multiplied by, there are 4 3s being multiplied together. So I've got 3 to the power of 4. And I'm finding the square root of all of that. Now the good news when we are working with roots like this is I can now find the square root of each of these separately and it gives me the same thing as if I were to work it all out in one go. So I can find the square root of 2 to the power of 6 and the square root of 3 to the power of 4 and I can just multiply them together. So using what we were just doing, the rule we, we found was I can just take my exponent and divide it by the radical's index, which even though you can't see it, there's an invisible little 2 over here, so I'm going to divide by 2. So I'm going to say 2 to the power of 6 divided by 2 is 3 times 3 to the power of 4 divided by 2 is 2. So now I've got 2 cubed times 3 squared. Now this is going to be much easier to work out. 2 cubed I know is 8, 3 squared I know is 9, and that gives me 72. So now I can say that the square root of 5,184 5, is 72, which is something that I wouldn't have been able to work out just using, uh, just in my head, or it's not something that I would have been able to memorize either, but I can work it out using the ladder method to write it as a product of its prime factors in exponential form and then using what I know about exponents and roots 
to work out what the square root is and then multiplying it together. Okay, so now you're going to do an example for yourselves. And in this example, you are going to be finding the cube root. So just be careful when you're finding the cube root. The process is the same, except that you're going to be dividing by 3 when you get to this step over here. You're going to be dividing by 3 to go from the root to finding out what the root is. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this example. Okay, you should be done with that example, so let's go through that now. So here we had the cube root of 1,728,000, and we first have to go and find out what 1,728,000 is as a product of its prime factors by using the ladder method. So we have 1,728,000. ,000. It is even, so we know that 2 is going to be a prime factor, or is going to be a factor, and that should have given you 864,000. Divide by 2 again, and that gives you 432,000. Divide by 2 again, and you get 216,000. Divide by 2 again, you get 108,000. And again, you get 54,000. Again, you get 27,000. Again, and you get 13,500. Again, and you get 6,750. Again, and you get 3,375. So now we are past the even numbers. There are no more even numbers. Now we're going to go on to 3. 3 does go in here, so I get 1,125. 3 goes in again, and I get 3, oh, 375. rather. 3 goes in again, and I get 125. And then 3 doesn't go into 125, but 5 does go in, and that gives me 25. Then 5 goes in again, and then I get 5, and 5 goes in one more time, and I get 1. So now I can write 1,728,000 as 2 to the power of, so I've got the cube root of, 2 to the power of, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, twos all together. So I've got 2 to the power of 9. Then I am multiplying that by 3 times 3 times 3 is 3 to the power of 3 times 5 to the power of 3 as well. Now, when I simplify this, I'm going to find the cube root of all of that. I'm going to divide each of these exponents by the index of my radical, which is 3. So I've got 9 divided by 3 is 3. So the first one is 2 to the power of 3. Okay, then I have 
3 to the power of, now 3 divided by 3 is 1. Whenever you have an exponent of 1, you don't need to write that 1. You can just leave it as 3. So it's just 3 times 5. Again, I've got 3 divided by 3 gives me 1. So it's just 5. So I've got 2 cubed times five or times 3 times 5. That gives me 8 times 3 times 5. So 2 times, or 8 times 3, or actually let's go 8 times 5 is 40, times 3 is 120. So you should have found that the cube root of 1,728,000 is 120. So that is how we use a prime factorization where we're using the ladder method to write numbers as product of their prime factors in exponential form to work out the roots of those numbers, whether it's a square root or a cube root, or you could work out any root of a number using this method. So we, we use the ladder method to write it as, product of, as a product of its prime factors in exponential form. And then you take whatever the radical's um, index is, and you divide the exponents by that index, where you're finding out what your root is. And then you just simplify once you've done that. Okay. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.